Someone just asked a question, what specifically do I look for when researching companies on the fundamental side and also while using Dilution Tracker? So I'm going to talk about the specifics here for TerraWolf. We're going to start there. And unfortunately, there are some negative things here, but naturally that's going to come with the sector. I'm not bashing the stock. I'm just being unbiased and honest about the metrics here. And TerraWolf does fit into that category of things we really would not like to see, some things we wish we could have done a little differently, but that's okay, right? We have to point these things out so that we could observe it in the future, right? And the first thing you want to start with is the historical OS and potential dilution. Now, if you're a shareholder or maybe a future shareholder, right, you have to worry about the overall supply. How many shares are there created or in circulation? Okay, that's very important because ultimately, the greater the supply, the less demand, in theory, the lower the share price. So if you have 1 million shares available, everyone's fighting for that very small amount of supply. You have 500 million, anyone can buy it, right? And again, that value decreases. Okay, so that's really important there. Now, unfortunately, with Wolf, right, we know it's a capital intensive business here, not necessarily for their company, but we know the mining sector is not profitable. There's a lot of debt on these books. So we know the need to raise capital, of course, is, again, necessary. So when we look back at mid end of 22, that's sort of where I wish the cap structure was now, right? Right around 100, maybe 120 million, I think would be the sweet spot. Unfortunately, from that point where we are now, it's up to about 240, which is a lot, right? I would like to see that go a little bit lower, but unfortunately, that's where we are. And the stock is trading, you know, around a dollar and 80, dollar 70, give or take. Now, the next aspect here is when we go to the cash position, right? We have to understand two aspects here. One, how much does it cost to keep the doors open? That's going to be, again, your quarterly cash burn. So we divide this 2.21 million out by three months, which would be each quarter, and that's 736 thousand dollars you know pretty much each month to keep the doors open it's relatively nothing it's very low which is a very attractive part of the business because any one wealthy investor could fund this or keep the doors open here and we'll show you other examples of things that are again not so good on this aspect the next thing we want to focus on is how much they have left in terms of their runway or how many months so in this case they have 3.6 months left of cash so in theory you know if the business is smart they're not going to wait to the last single minute until there's no more cash on their books. So they have to be thinking about or considering a way in which they could raise capital. Now, again, I'm just being very general here, right? Those, I'm not talking specifically about terrible, right? Let's imagine this is any other business with a different ticker. Okay. So three months left, you have to think in some immediate term, there's going to be some form of dilution or the need to, again, uh, raise capital through certain tools or instruments, like we said, again, stock and warrants that we'll talk about in a moment. But a positive thing here is they only burn 2.2 million a quarter. It's very low. It doesn't require a lot of capital, which is great. Okay. That's a positive here. So as we scroll down now, here is where the issue comes in play, right? We have warrants that are now exercisable. These are penny warrants, okay? And I believe these are dollar warrants. The key thing here, or the common denominator, is they're both April 1st of 24. So typically when you do these deals, they're convertibles, they're discounted to market, and they have sometimes either Rule 144, a 6 to 12 month restriction on them, which means you're not able to trade the stock um, until 12 months out. So now they're able to exercise these warrants. Obviously, that's going to be very dilutive. OK, so we see 26.6, 13.3. So let's just call this 40 million total here. OK, so now what we would do is we look and we say, OK, no problem. Let's now go and scroll up and check out Finviz. We're looking at the short float here. We're seeing the short interest, 33 million shares, 23% of the float, right? So that sort of makes sense. Now let's take a look again at shortsqueeze.com, right? We see that that's 33 million, but what was it last report? Last report, it was again, 30% higher and up to 38.95 million, which again, let's just be fair and let's round this up to 39 million. Well, that's very interesting, right? Because that lines up very, very well with the 40 million we saw fully converted here for Wolf, right? We see the numbers here, 13.3 and 26 is 40 million. And that is someone hedging short 39 million shares worth in anticipation that all of these are going to be again exercised or fully diluted.
Okay, so let's just take one of these numbers, for example, here, right? It's really good to, again, understand that context. That's why I'm pointing it out. Let's just say they fully exercise these dollar warrants at $13, okay? That would give the company $13 million in cash, right? Now that sort of answers the question here for the cash position, right? We know they have about 2.7. Now they get $13 million. Okay, so we now want to take that 13 million and we want to divide it out by the 736,000 that they burn each month. And now you get 17.6 months worth of cash off of that. Let's just say again, they only used uh, the dollar warrants there and they raised all of them. Okay, that's 17.6 months of cash. That again would be 13 million plus the 2.7, that'd be around 15.7 million, which would probably give you around 20 to 21 and a half months left. Okay, so almost two years of cash. Now, again, what it's gonna do is it's going to take this cap structure here from about 238, and that's gonna up it to around 250. Okay, which again is showing you more dilution here. Okay, it's gradually again going up, right? So again, it's really interesting point here uh, when you look at certain companies and cap structures and how they go about, you know, raising money. And, and again, when you correlate that to the share price, just based off of supply and demand. So just be cautious if you're going to get involved with tickers in the near future. Understand that this could be something that could put a speed bump in it, a roadblock, a temporary decrease in price, especially like we saw if they're a discounted, right? If they're penny warrants, if there's 20, 30 percent discount to market on the warrants and that's exercise. Size, that again is why we're seeing the stock price held down so much because of the shorting that's happening, the hedging that's going on. Okay. So context, very, very important. Now we look at a company like Chromadex, for example, which is one we just talked about, right? Now we look at the historical OS and potential dilution. And we go all the way back to 2021 here, 2020, actually, the end of 2020, we saw about 68 million shares here. So about 68 million in the OS. And then when we look at where we are currently, we're sitting at about 75. Okay, so over the course of three plus years, you can see the difference, right? 100, 120 million shares versus six, seven million. Okay, so it's really, really tight. There's not a lot of dilution. There's not a need to. It seems like it's sort of every two years, 2017, 2019, 21, 2022, the end of it, right? And then they sort of use that money for like a year, raise a little bit, keep that, raise a little bit, right? It's very slow and gradual. It's nothing huge or massively dilutive. And again, I think that's why the share price is stabilizing, okay? So then as we scroll down here, we'll look at the cash business and they are cash flow positive, right? So they're not burning money a quarter. They're actually positive net income here, okay? And what we see is they have $56 million in cash on their books, so this is fantastic. And then we look down, right? Very, very tight in terms of the dilution here. They have a January or June 2023 shelf. And then again, they have an ATM from 2020. Okay, 50 million worth. So I'm sure they have a lot of cash that's already there. They don't need to use it. This is a really, really good sign that you want to focus on companies that are not diluting, that don't really have an overwhelming urge to expand that cap structure. CRDL was another one we called out that ran over 100% from 2021 all the way to where we are currently. Only 4 million shares in the OS have been expanded. Cash position sitting on $30 million of cash. 14 months of runway, no need to dilute in the immediate future, no need to raise capital, not even a thought. And then the last one was Mullen, right? This is sort of what you don't want. And on the surface, it might appear like, oh, they only have, you know, 6 million OS. No, but you look all the way back, right? It was 0 0.08, 0 0.06, right? They diluted this all the way down. They absolutely destroyed shareholders, obliterated this um, without a question. OK, and even on the surface here, right, this is what we don't want to see. Look, massive amount of cash burn quarterly. So to keep the doors open every three months, 60 million is going out the hole. 60 million dollars. OK, this is two hundred 
and $40 million they are burning every single year. So over the course of four or five years, they are burning a billion dollars in cash. 43 million cash on the books is barely getting them two months, not even a quarter. So when you look at these other companies, a lot less capital intensive. They're, the money goes a lot longer, right? It has a lot more purchasing power, a lot more, again, runway than this company, right? Everything is wrong here. As so many red flags um, with Mullen. I just, again, would not touch it. And then the worst part about it is when you look at the dilution here, I mean, it's insane. June 23 warrants, the third round, additional cashless warrants with Series C, September 22 warrants, November 22 warrants, all of them with clauses in them specifically. Um, again, no good. Nothing you want to see like this. I personally have never seen this many instruments, this many um, issuance of you know warrants and securities. It's really, really crazy just in 2023 alone. Look at how much they have to keep raising and raising and raising to keep the doors open. I mean, it's like never ending. So this is a stock that no matter how much you buy, it's just, again, not going to be successful because of this reason. They have to keep diluting. There's always incentives when raising money, especially when the business sucks, because they know ultimately the stock's going to go lower. So they have to give a discount. They have to incentivize. They have to do something to, you know, raise this big money. You know, and again, what does 90 million even get them, right? Four or five, you know, uh, months at most. It's, I mean, it's crazy. So either way, Mullen is something that you would want to completely avoid, right? You want to focus on companies that are cash flow positive, that have a very, very tight cap structure, 20, 25 million OS, like podcast one, right? Cash position, cash flow positive, no debt on the company, super, super tight, you know, just January 23 warrants, that's it. Okay, so when you focus on good quality companies that have a nice balance of institutional ownership, Nice amount of insider ownership. It doesn't have to be 50, 60, 80 percent, but a good balance, nice liquidity in the stock. It trades very, very well. Right. That's the good signs. That's the things you want to look for. Right. You have to, again, line up the business with their raises and the history and look on the chart. What happens every time they go to the market and they raise money? Does the stock get killed? Right. And then again, just compare and contrast stocks that perform really well, what they do. And then again, stocks that don't perform very well. And then again, compare the differences between them. Right. That's all that I'm doing here. Right. We're looking at companies that are really solid. They have no debt. There's no overwhelming issue here on the analyst reports for the balance sheets or anything like that. So there's all good stuff, a lot of positivity surrounding them. The only reason why we're seeing Wolf get shorted down is because there is debt on the books, right? They continue to dilute, right? We see that. They need cash. They have a lot of potential dilution hit in the market soon, right? We see over 30 plus million shares are currently open and short right now. And again, that's the reason is because they're not in a position right now to get out of this hole. They need to still pay off another additional 60 plus million in debt. Once they do that, clear the balance sheet sheets up, have a clear path to profitability. Okay, then that'll be a different story. But we're showing you the stock now because it's not there yet. So maybe you take advantage of the discount. Maybe you take advantage of the opportunity and you look at the flip side of the coin instead of saying, oh, well, it doesn't look good on the surface, doesn't look good on paper right now. Maybe six months from now, it will. Maybe a year from now, it will. And maybe 12 months from now, we'll be at three or five or 10x the price. So it's all a matter of perspective. Again, your conviction in a stock, it's not one aspect, one metric, one specific tool that we use. It's a multitude of different things. I like to say there's multiple pieces to the puzzle. It's fundamental. It's a little bit of technical, right? It's understanding the actual sector and the business model and the path to profitability and the people running it and the IR behind it and the, the marketplace and the way that it trades and everything, right? There's, there's multiple pieces to it. Once you start to understand everything from a macro perspective and tie it down and again, really fine tune it, I think you guys will have no problem crushing it. OK, now, again, like we mentioned before, uh, this is not a perfect system. I'm not here to give you any cookie cutter program, right? There's a lot of things I look for that ultimately uh, determines whether or not I'm going to enter or exit a position. But what I'd really like from you guys is if you could drop a comment in the section below. Let me know if you like these style of videos where they're more educational, showing you how to research, how to break down stocks, how to, again, 
gauge where the price is going. Please leave some recommendations on what I can do better. Is there anything you're struggling with that, again, I could make a video on that I could sort of clear up for you that can maybe help you get, you know, in the right foot forward or, again, in the better direction? I would love to do that. So, again, if you don't mind smashing that like button, click and subscribe if you haven't. Also, sharing and reposting this video, I would greatly appreciate it. But besides that, have a fantastic night, guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.